Hi guys and welcome to another Tribe Sunday morning video. I hope you've all had a really good week. Um, we are going to start today the same as we start every week. You know the drill by now. Pause the video, have a look at the, um, the worship playlist on YouTube um, and then just spend some time in worship and reflection. There's new songs on there so look at them all, look at some of them. Uh, but when you're done and when you've had that moment in reflection, uh, come back, join the video and then we'll be able to get on with today's topic. Brilliant. So today's topic, I'm going to be doing another well-known story. The um, story we're doing today is David and Goliath. Uh, it is very well known. If you, haven't, uh, if you haven't read it or you want a bit of a refresher, then go back and, and read it. It's 1 Samuel 17, um, verse well, 32 is where I'm going to be reading from, um, but from the beginning of the chapter if you want to read the whole story. Um, I'm not going to say I'm not going to read it all and I'll be reading like little snippets of the story um, rather than a whole whole block of passages, just the ones that I think are relevant um, today. So here we go. Don't worry about this Philistine, David told Saul. I'll go fight him. Don't be ridiculous, Saul replied. There's no way you can fight this Philistine and possibly win. You're only a boy and he's been a man of war since his youth. But David persisted. I have been taking care of my father's sheep and goats, he said. When a lion or a bear comes to steal a lamb from the flock, I go after it with a club and rescue it from the, the lamb from its mouth. If the animal turns on me, I catch it by the jaw and club it to death. I have done this to both lions and bears, and I'll do it to this pagan Philistine too, for he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord who rescued me from the claws of the lion and the bear will rescue me from this Philistine. And I'm just going to skip a little bit. Um, to verse 40, he picked up five smooth stones from a stream and put them into his shepherd's bag. Then armed only with his shepherd's staff and sling, he started across the valley to fight the Philistine. Goliath walked out to David with his shield bearer ahead of him, sneering in contempt at this ruddy faced boy. Am I a dog, he roared at David, that you come at me with a stick? And he cursed David by the names of his gods. Come over here and I'll give your flesh to the birds and wild animals, Goliath yelled. Uh, just going to skip a little bit to verse 48. As Goliath moved closer to attack, David quickly ran out to meet him, reaching into his shepherd's bag and taking out a stone. He hurled it with his sling and hit the Philistine in the forehead. The stone sank in and Goliath stumbled and fell face down on the ground. So David triumphed over the Philistine with only a sling and a stone, for he had no sword. Cool. So a couple of things that I'm going to take from this story. Um... The first one being miracles aren't always spectacular. Now, miracles are and can be spectacular. Um, and actually what I want to talk about in this story is it's almost a question I'm going to pose to you, really, is we always talk about David killing Goliath being the big miracle in this story. And it is a, it's a big miracle um, with David being able to kill Goliath with just a sling and a stone. But in my mind, when I read this story, I think back to what he was saying to Saul, first of all, about all of these things he's done with lions and bears his entire life. So the, the, the question I'm going to pose to you here is, is the biggest miracle in this story when David killed Goliath with the stone? Or is it the way God has steered David's life from, a, from his young age to have the experience and expertise he needed to defeat Goliath when he got there. And if that's the case, this brings up all sorts of stories about our kind of only all sorts of thoughts about our own lives. And um, actually the times in our lives where we feel like not much is happening or we're not really fulfilling our destiny, it brings a whole kind of meaning to it of this could be in preparation for something. And even the really bad things that happen to us could God can use these moments to help us prepare for something he has planned for us in the future. Now, I'm not saying these, these things happen um, or God causes things, these things to happen in order to prepare you. But when these things happen, God is using them to prepare you. Um, and actually, again, I know in, in my life that, uh, you know, I've had some tough stuff happening to me and I've spoken in previous videos about my experiences at uni and all of that stuff. 
And I know that God has used all of those experiences in my life to prepare me for where I am now as a youth worker and is continuing to prepare me for wherever I end up in the future. So actually, yeah, the question I want kind of want you guys to mull over is what is the, the biggest miracle here? Um, or actually, you know, rather than just focusing on the one miracle of David killing Goliath, actually the miracle of God steering David's life in such a way that he had the expertise and experience to kill Goliath. The second and final thing I'm going to get out of this is the um, a little bit further on in the story where I kind of skipped to is David picks up five stones. And this story is all about David's faith and the faith he had in God in order to step up to this giant Goliath um, and kind of go against him in, in combat. And actually, David did this in one stone, but he picked up five. Now, I've always skipped over this um, until about probably about a year ago. Um, it kind of really jumped out at me, these words. He picked up five stones and it kind of like, well, if, if David had so much faith, then why did he feel the need to pick up five stones? And when I was thinking about this, it really struck me that God can do incredible things. And, and we know and David trusted that God could um, enable him to defeat Goliath with one stone. But he picked up five because he was fully prepared to take a second attempt and a third attempt and a fourth attempt and a fifth attempt. And I think this is really profound for us because it's so easy to get disheartened when things don't go the right way or we're sure of something. Like, so for me, the example I, I, you know, I've used a number of times of, of being a youth worker, I've known for many, many years that I wanted to be a youth worker. And I could have quite easily given up at the first time that I didn't quite get a job or the second time I didn't quite get a job um, or where uni didn't quite end the way I thought it would or had planned for uni to end. And all of these things... Um, I could have given up and said, well, I've obviously got it wrong. But actually, I took the second attempt and I took the third attempt. And here I am uh, as a youth worker. Um, and I think it's the same for David. Now, it, it worked for David and he did it first try. But it, I think it's so profound that he was ready and willing to have to take uh, a second or third or fourth or fifth attempt if it, it went there. And I don't think that diminishes his faith in God at all. He was just willing um, to not let one setback block or diminish his faith in what God can do. So that's what I've got for you today. I hope that means something. Um, once again, I'm looking forward to seeing all of you in Tribe um, and Shine in our midweek Zoom meetings. And once again, keep up to date with Instagram and Facebook for all of the new videos coming out um, and everything there. So I hope you all have a really good week and we'll see you next Sunday.